Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy. Remember it so you don't have to. Well, if you've ever been to the Magic Kingdom, chances are one of your favorite rides is the Haunted Mansion. Now, how could it not be? With its endless creativity, gothic atmosphere, and so many clever visuals that no one could see it in one viewing. The Haunted Mansion has become one of the theme park's most praised attractions. So, when Disney had a surprise monster hit with their Pirates of the Caribbean movie, they figured maybe bringing the same amount of cinematic effort to one of the most famous rides of all time might be called for here as well. Best way to begin? Well, let's have Eddie Murphy star in it. Ruin! one of Disney's most playfully dark and gothic ideas be given to such an obviously wrong actor. Not that A. Murphy can't do good work, he just does it so rarely. This is like putting Will Ferrell in Batman, or Sarah Silverman in Sophie's Choice, or Pierce Brosnan in a music- Oh yeah, we're still paying for that. But some actors obviously don't go with some movies. And the sad thing is they try to tailor what could have been a really awesome idea with a dark sense of humor to a story as intriguing as the ones you find on the side of Happy Meal boxes. Hell, even Happy Meal boxes are looking creepier than anything in this film. So, does anything capture the original creativity of the ride? Well, let's take a look with... Eddie Murphy's Haunted Mansion. So a boy, who literally has nothing to do with anything, shows up just so the house can tell him to piss off. Well, you heard the movie, it's a go away! It wants to get rid of us as much as the writing does. We then transition via shit-eating grin to Eddie Murphy trying to sell a house to overactor number one and overactor number two. It's just what we've been looking for. There aren't enough plugs. Doyle! Every house we look at, you find something to pick at. <sighs> I just know what I like. Mm. Would you like a divorce? Because I'll bring it. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, if I had a nickel for how many divorces were caused by plugs. Actually, that sounds worse than I meant it to be. We love the house. He closes up another deal at the Ricky Tiki room where the happy couple wants to celebrate, but Murphy has to get to his anniversary dinner in time for- Oh, it's this bullshit setup! See, I didn't know if they were gonna do the clumsy dreamer who has to prove himself, the cowardly weirdo who has to prove himself, but now I see it's the workaholic douchebag who has to prove himself. Because as we all know with family films, there's only three stories to tell. And seeing how the last film combining a black father with ghosts used this method to such fucking greatness, it only makes sense to use it again here. What a world of maybe a child-sized handful of possibilities. Did you just sell their house? I sure did. Cause we're looking to buy. And seeing how Murphy clearly for some reason doesn't believe in business cards, he misses the dinner with his very angry wife. Okay, we'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna take off this weekend. What? Like we did last year with the kids, just us and the kids for the whole weekend. How's that sound? How about Orlando? I've voiced so many annoying characters for their attraction, surely we can get in for free. She agrees to the trip, but travel-sized Chris Rock here is afraid of a spider in his room. And it's time I teach you how to kill a spider the right way, all right? The yeah, I remember how many kids had Houdini posters hanging in their room. Maybe that was a plot thread that was going to go somewhere, but again. They probably saw how well it worked in Ghost Dad and Seriously Movie, nobody should have this many strange connections to that fucking film. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. But they get a call to look at a house that could be a big payday for Murphy and decides to take a look with his family before their weekend break. Megan, don't slam the door like that, it's very sensitive. It's a car, Dad. Ah! It's not just a car. It's a very delicate piece of machinery. Shh, she didn't mean what she just said. Well, can't imagine why that scene was put in there. You'd see a less obvious setup with bowling pins having the words break me written on them. So they enter the haunted mansion, while not badly designed, does look like every other creepy movie house you've seen before. Nothing really sets it that much apart. Hey look, there goes Casper, Morticia, Count Olaf, and Owen Wilson reminding us to be scared. Really creepy. Thus we're introduced to the butler of the house, and clearly the only person having any fun in this film, Terrence Stamp. That's right, General Zod is playing this part. And if you want an idea for what you're in for, take a listen to how he says his very first line. Sarah Evers? <laughs> and I'm not even kidding, that is literally how he says every single line in this film. He has a machine gun vibrato that will make Elmer Fudd's laugh jealous. The master. Sounds wonderful. The storm has flooded the road. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> Seriously, Zod, what are you doing in this film? Well, remember why I said I did some movies in the past I wasn't very proud of? Oh. Well, 
Yeah, but I thought you meant, uh... What? Thought I meant what? I, I just kind of made the assumption that you... You... You thought I was doing porn, didn't you? Well, it's just the way you're dressed, you know? I just no, 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 I see. Just because a man wears all leather and exposes his man cleavage means he must be some sort of gentleman of the night. It's just most people outside of that industry don't usually dress that way. Well, according to the Matrix, all Houstonians dress this way. It doesn't mean I have sex for money. Okay, okay, I'm sorry I made that assumption. Okay, Zod, ready when you are? Drop the pants and let's get filming. I Well, I'm doing it now! That's only because certain opportunities have opened up for me! Opportunities? Yes, yeah, so apparently when the Man of Steel lasers your balls off, everybody wants to see what it looks like. Might as well make a little cha-ching off of it. I'm gonna forget anything about your genitalia, was said, and get back to the review. Fine, I got work to do too. <laughs> well, I guess I should get used to that. So Zod takes them to the owner of the house named Edward Gracie. Tell me, Mr. Ellis, do you believe in ghosts? Well, I have brought my career back from the dead several times. Does that count? The storm has swollen the river. Okay, Sad. I know the voice you're going for, but has anyone ever actually heard another person talk like that? You're making Michael Crawford sound like the Micro Machine guy. I'm afraid there will be no leaving the mansion tonight. It's as dark as the music of the night, Christine. So they can't leave the mansion and decide to spend the night there. Will there be anything else that you require, sir? Well, are you gonna get some chocolates? <laughs> Pardon? You know the little chocolates they put on the hotel pillows? Sometimes they have chocolates on the pillow. Save it for Shrek 12. Of course, no one actually sleeps, and they start snooping around the house because, well, it's a big creepy place and they all have Penny Gadget Syndrome. Interesting. Murphy discovers the bat poles while the daughter also makes a shocking discovery. What do you think it is? Or at least, it would be shocking if she was even the tiniest bit surprised by it. I think it wants us to follow it. It does. It wants us to follow it. Dude, we're the iPhone generation. The only time we're ever actually shocked is when Facebook changes their layout. They did it again? My life is over. The wife as well bumps into Gracie who seems to be quite taken with her. So much so that he's where he only has one setting in this film. Whimsical. Grand parties, dancing, laughter. I really must show you. There's nothing to be afraid of. It's corpse. And above all, hope. Even when he's saying really sad stuff, he seems bizarrely inspired by it. These walls are filled with so many memories. Some of them, painful. You can tell by the smile on my face. I'm so upset! Elizabeth, hers is the story that haunts these walls. You see, a long time ago she- Oh, I guess we're not doing that then. Odd transition. The kids follow the flaming smurf testicle deeper into the house where they come across a picture of a woman that, of course, looks just like their mom. What are you doing here? You're not supposed to be up here. This is unspeakable, unspeakable. Inconceivable even. Come on, high five. You knew that was coming. Come on, give me a high five. Actually, put your hand on the computer screen and give me a high five. Come on, high five. High five me, bro, high five. If you actually do it, I will be concerned about you. Bazad enters the room and they tell them to hide. The children are not in their room. Children? What children? The children she wasn't supposed to bring, along with that brainless husband of hers. Those rascally rapscallions really ruffle my riches! If I had to listen to another word from that insufferable fool, I think I would have burst. Of course, sir. What a fool! I'll be the only one tasting the scenery, thank you. The final arrangements have been made. Nothing further will interfere with the master's plan. Now if you'll excuse me, my monster from his slab began to rise. Meanwhile, Murphy stumbles across another big surprise. <laughs> Terrible CG that could have easily been done with makeup! <laughs> hey, DreamWorks is the only company that gets to turn me into a computer-generated jackass. He then comes across Madame Leota, who if you remember from the ride was played by the same actress who played Maleficent and Cinderella's stepmother. So obviously, they had to get somebody just as dignified to play the- Oh, you fucking kidding me? There is great evil in this house. A devil's curse. It seeks to destroy you. Okay, look, I have nothing against Jennifer Tilly. She's funny, she's talented, and... Surprisingly random, a goddess of poker. But this is meant for a dignified voice. Every time I hear her, I keep expecting her to get legal advice from Jim Carrey. And lead us through this stormy night. 
She then lifts him up into the air with a bunch of instruments because... Really no reason except it was on the ride. Oh! Oh, I'm trying to out-tucker Chris Tucker! Coming to the big screen, Walt Disney Pictures proudly presents Gargoyles. From the studio that put Eddie Murphy in the Haunted Mansion, Kira Knightley as a pirate, and Mila Kunis as the Wicked Witch, we present another phenomenal miscasting with Kanye West as Goliath. Yeah, I'm stoned by day and batshit crazy monster by night. Also, I'm apparently in a movie. Because you love our film versions of Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast. Even though we already have film versions of Cinderella and Beauty and the Beast. Why they do that shit? We bring you another misunderstanding of source material by casting Ellen DeGeneres as Elisa Maza. Bitch, who the fuck are you? Zing, I'm your love interest. Say what, you clam chowder cracker? Don't worry, I've seen worse. I dated Anne Heche. That's an old joke, kids. If you don't get it, ask your parents. Of course, if you're watching this, you are your parents. Okay. Not so fast. With Kevin Costner as the villainous Xanatos. I am Xenatos. Xanatos! I don't care. I have sent up my robotic army. If you wish to save the people, you will have to fly up there and stop them. Bitch that fuck! I don't do any flying unless I have a crown of thorns or a halo. What are you supposed to do? Let all those people die? Maybe. Shut it, postman! I could buy you like my wife. I am Xanax Toe. Xanatos! I don't care. I didn't watch the show. His wings here. Yeah, it's yeah, like Professor, Professor X. X. Beyonce should be in it's this not role. Xanatos. Like it should really <laughs> have a Z. Gargoyles coming soon to a theater near. Hey, let go of me. What? I'ma let you finish, but I want you to know that Bonkers is one of the greatest shows of all time. And we deserve a movie about a cartoon character and a cop. We have two. We need three. Hey, you want to hear about the show I'm producing that's going to bomb? Bitch, don't make me chop you up and smoke you. I am Santa Hose. So Crazy continues to tell Murphy's wife about his dead wife, claiming the events happened to his grandfather instead of to himself. And he loved her more than life. Itself. But they were from different worlds and couldn't be together. Hey, hey! We tiptoe towards racism not existing in Princess and the Frog. We can do the same thing here. Dad! Dad! So the kids meet up with Murphy and try to find out what to do. For the truth to be known, you must find the key. Hey, what are you talking about, ball lady? What key? Enter the tomb under the great dead oak and travel down deep under the ground. And there you will find the key that must be found. Okay, where is this clause that says that side characters must speak in bullshit riddles and rhymes? Why can't they just say go fucking here and do fucking that because fucking this? A fun scavenger hunt is one thing, but when lives are on the line, skip the Frank Gorshin cock tease. The servants help them in their quest and suddenly turn blue because... Pac-Man ate the corner pellet, I don't know. And they come across more spooks recreating the ride. Dad? Yes. I see dead people. Hey, that doesn't date this at all! Why don't you just throw in a getting jiggy reference while you're at it? He wants to try to get jiggy with my wife? Pretty much. Why the hell not? Did I also forget to mention that you are the weakest link, Houston, we have a problem, and somebody just did a gray cave drawing of a buffalo? This was to have been her wedding dress. It would have been lovelier still if she'd ever had a chance to wear it. Uh, that's nice, Mr. Gracie, but we've been talking about this for three hours now. Can we finally change the subject? He was willing to throw everything away for love. Well, now he's broke, dead, and cursed. Nice move. Crap. I stepped in a 40s cartoon sound effect. And as is typical of bad adaptations, they take one of the coolest parts of the original source and make it easily the most annoying part of the entire movie. It's by the um by the light by the light by the light of the silvery. I gotta help my wife now. She'll be coming round the mountain when she comes. When she comes, she'll be coming. Are you laughing yet? No. Fucking more. Where's the key? Where's the beautiful key? Find the key. Find the key. You left your key. Oh, your two-year-old is laughing, but you're not. But you're not. Unless you're smoking a gigantic brick of pot. Brick of pot. We're annoying and obnoxious, and you probably should have shot us. Please don't hold back then and give us what you got. What, what you, you got. got. Thank you, God. 
<laughs> it's a warning. How do you know that? I studied Latin for three years, Dad. You thought it was dumb, remember? Gee, a daughter who speaks Latin and a son with a Houdini poster? Stop! The realistic kid measurements are off the chart! The son stays behind as the daughter goes with him down below. The shield! It's the second marker! But it's guarded by the walking doll, causing them to drop the key. Did you get the key? I'm looking! I'm looking! Have everything completely under control. And I'm not just saying that because every person who has ever said that in the history of mankind has always met with the exact opposite reaction. Uh... Oh my god! Creepy creatures are actually in front of me and not CG! This is so rare in this movie! Come on, can't you see GN Kazoo or the Twilight Baby or something? There you go, fake CG spiders. God, this film felt naked for a second. Open the door, I'll kill you! Just open the door, please, man. We're running out of time. Open the door right now. Sorry, I need the customary minute and a half to perform the overcoming my fears cliche. Minute 22, minute 23. Oh, I want you to end this movie. So they seem to have the key. You got the key? Or do they? Oh, yeah, I got it. Oh, I guess they do. That was needed. And Murphy discovers that Zod is the one who killed Gracie's wife years ago. So he throws Murphy out of the house and locks up the kids in a trunk. You might be wondering, where the hell is the mother in all this? Well, naturally, she's still listening to Gracie's story this whole time! Christ, lady, you give more time to this guy than Peter Jackson does to The Hobbit! Do you believe that love is about second chances? Yes. Don't you recognize me at all? It's your Gracie. I thought certainly. Bringing you back to Gracie Manor would help you. So he tells her that she's the spirit of his lost love, but she has no memory whatsoever. It can't be her. It is her, sir. The gypsy woman prophesied her return. But she doesn't remember. In time she will, sir. I assure you, she will. She'll remember after I beat it into her. I'm not Elizabeth. We wouldn't want anything to happen to the children now, would we? So he tells her that unless she marries Gracie to lift the curse, he'll... I don't know, send her kids through baggage claim? And she begrudgingly agrees. But Gracie is confused by her crying while walking down the aisle. Tears of joy. You can trust your creepy, dark-eyed, whispery voice to darling. Ooh. But the dignified Madame Leota rolls in like a hamster ball and gives Murphy the motivation not to give up. Hold on! With what? I'm finally gonna follow through on my loving the car joke! Only to have no reaction, thus not following through on the loving the car joke. Gutter ball? Dearly beloved, oh, we are gathered together here in the sight of God. Is Howling Dog an accent? We are gathered here today to celebrate these two. So Murphy hurries to save the kids. Michael! Megan! Dracula fucking McCoyne's asshole! So he defeats the knights. Yeah, I believe it too. And gets the kids out of the trunk to help him save his wife. Yeah, I got a few objections. Elizabeth didn't kill herself. He did it. He's been lying to you all along. That is absurd. Totally absurd. It makes me want to laugh. <laughs> Damn you. Damn you, all to hell. Uh-oh. Zod's demon army has come to burn our heroes up. Or they confusingly decide to take him instead because he said the D-word? So the spirits of Do You Really Give a Shit come in for Do You Really Need a Reason and take Zod away because would you even listen if I told you? Oh god, what kind of world is this where Terrence Stamp goes to hell but Eddie Murphy is untouched? Mom, what's wrong? Are you alright? But it seems the poison has taken its effect on his wife, leading to Murphy's most genuinely authentic, phoned-in performance he has yet given. Sarah, Sarah, come on, please. Sarah, Sarah, I love you. Sarah, please, I love you so much. Come on, honey, we had dinner reservations, Olive Garden. 
Those are so mildly annoying to cancel. But the radioactive Navi turd arrives again, possessing her with the spirit of Elizabeth, who brings Murphy's wife back to life. I thought I lost you too. I'm back, Sarah. I'm back. At least until Pluto Nash. That's a long uphill climb from there. Thus the curse is lifted and all the spirits are freed at last. What's all this? Well, I don't know what we'll need. What are you talking about? We're going to heaven. You can't take it with you. The hell I can't! Don't you know? You never mess with a Sicilian when death is on the line! Angels in heaven together at last. The tale is well ended for those who have passed. Now that I agree with. The only people who leave this film happy are those who are dead. Mom, Leo won't shut up. Are we there yet? So I guess not all of the souls were taken. The really annoying ones were left behind. And for some reason, the family decided to keep them. Because... Wouldn't you also want to take them home? It'd be like having a hearing aid that's also a fire alarm. Nothing but pleasant sounds all year round. Which is definitely not what was in this film. What should have been a film on par with the creativity and fun of Pirates of the Caribbean instead turns out to be a series of performances, effects, and story threads all set on autopilot. Yeah, everything feels half-ass with no passion put into it. And it's really a shame. There's a lot of possibilities with the Haunted Mansion. Hell, a lot of the characters on the ride already seem to have stories set up, so why make up this one with Eddie Murphy as the focus? With all the reboots that Disney is doing recently, this is one that desperately needs it. I mean, come on, couldn't you see this as like an animated film? Like the same people who did Frozen or Wreck-It Ralph work on the story and the look? It'd be amazing! This is still an incredible opportunity waiting to happen! But until then, if ever, this is all we have. A wasted opportunity of creativity and imagination, leaving little to no impression whatsoever. Ain't no fucking way I'm hitchhiking a ride on this wagon anytime soon. But on the plus side, I think I perfected my whispery voice butler, Sarah Evans. I'm the nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. That is absurd.